and welcome to another edition of Passion Lives. And this week's passion treat comes to you from one of Brooklyn's finest, Mr. Danny Simmons. I hope he doesn't mind me calling him that, you know, Brooklyn's finest. He's from Queens, but whatever. You'll find Danny in Brooklyn these days. And Danny is a true, true passion trailblazer in my books. And I'm sure many people in the art world would agree with that. He's the co-founder of the Rush Philanthropic Arts Foundation with his brother, Russell, which supports urban youth, giving them access to arts and education. And I got a chance to catch up with Danny who is just an incredible painter. Um, he's a, got a phenomenal collection of art and he is a true, true creative leader who has an eye on filmmaking these days. Danny proves that being a multi-talented person is part of what it means to live a creative lifestyle. Um, and I just want to thank you, Danny, for all the work that you do in the community for blossoming artists and people from all over the world. And um, Danny's going to share some of his insights on passion, relationships, and art. And folks, pull out all your talents, your gifts, and your resources, and live the story you wish to tell. Share your story with others. Take care, tune in, and I will see you soon. This is somebody who we so love and embrace. He is our, he's our, he's our, he's our Leonardo da Vinci, isn't he? What doesn't he do? Paint, read comic books, take care of dogs, host book parties for other poets, organize an arts community that makes a statement that reverberates throughout the world and write the sexiest poetry this side of Mississippi. Comic books. I was very passionate about comic books. I still am, but you know, uh, at that time, group of us uh, kids who would collect and trade comic books and, and that was a lot of fun. Also I was passionate about where I lived. I lived in a part of Queens that was still very um, undeveloped with a lot of woods. So I spent a lot of time in the woods um, building tree houses, hanging out, camping. Uh, the woods were right behind my house. So um, most of my days were spent after school in the woods and all summer long in the woods. And Around 9 or 10, I, I really want to recreate those comic book characters, so I started drawing them and creating my own little comic books. Uh, not my own characters, but out of the characters that, and I really like Marvel comics. Uh, and then it went away, and then when I was in college, um, I started developing a passion for writing. And um, so I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote poems, and I wrote a book. Um, and then I got writer's block and I figured I'd paint to uh, spur the, um, the creative juices. In my 30s, I started painting in earnest, um, and sold my early 30s and sold my first couple of paintings. And that's when I really started to produce art shows and um, I got the feeling for um, not only creating art, but creating spaces where art could happen. And between those two, that's where uh, most of the passion I have now lies. The thing that I'm spending most of my time thinking about is turning my novel Three Days as the Crow Flies into a movie. And it's been on a trajectory ever since I wrote it, uh, that I saw it as a movie. Um, and it went through the iterations that I think a movie goes through nowadays. It was a movie that became a graphic novel which made it more visual and now it's a movie script and we've just um, gotten sort of a go ahead from a re relatively famous director who wants to direct the movie and uh, we're going to make a movie. The Congo uh, because I love the art or the uh, cultural artifacts that comes out of there, the, the magical artifacts from the Sangay and the Congo people 
And the only connection that I really have to that is the art I collect and I see it and I feel the power of it and I feel the spirit in it. And so if colonialism and Western influences hasn't uh, stripped my romantic notion of who those people are and, and the religion and the, their connection to the earth and the spirituality, I'd love to visit them and find out all I could about uh, their life and how they connect to the universe. This is one of my more recent pieces. It was gifted to me. Somebody heard about my collection and their grandfather had been collecting African art and they were giving away pieces to the museums around the country. And he gave me this because he never seen my collection but he heard about it. And he gave me this. This is an amazing piece. This is a tortoise shell and seashells. It's from the Sangay people of the Congo. It's very unusual in size and stature. It's a village protection piece. Passion takes a lot of energy. Um, not that it takes a lot of energy to be passionate, but to sustain uh, that level of intensity of spirit and feeling drains you. Uh, especially the passion of love. Wow. There is a dark side of passion, especially when you're talking about romantic passion. Um, if you're hurt, then you, you have to resist trying to hurt somebody back. Um, I think there's always a fight that you need to continue to wish people well on their journeys, uh, even if um, you felt you were disappointed. I think human beings uh, struggle to, well, you should struggle to um, allow people their space. I think I'm probably going to leave this one alone in a second. <laughs> I keep seeing stuff I love. I like to do. deep in your best reflection. Um, I don't know if you know the premise about the book, but it's um, poems written in less than 160 characters that you could send to your lover. You know, like a little sexting going on, something like that, possibly. Um, some of them happen to be really nice. <laughs> Let me see. Your smell on yesterday's pillow, mm. I lay face down in you. Soft and yielding, tangled in dreams and restless sheets, climbing your endless stairs. I trip and fall, trip and fall into you. Mm. Yes. Yes, all of it. Yes. <laughs> Wish you well.